Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the lesson. Today's topic, painting, is a flower bouquet by Eva Gonzalez. That's dated 1873. Yeah, so let's take a closer look. Um, I've chosen this painting due to Valentine's Day. That was this week. So um, kind of uh, yeah, this topic got me inspired for the bouquet. Um, let me show you what I have here on my table. So I have a set of acrylic paints. I have a plastic palette. So where you mix the paints, uh, of course, the water. I have, let's say, typical. We use three type brushes, the bigger, medium and small. And today I also have one old brush and you can see it's all really um, not new, yeah, from, from the use, but I always advise don't throw away old brushes. Sometimes they're good and can be practical. And let's say today I plan with this brush to do those little flower yeah, strokes, because uh, it's good to do the dry brush technique with this one. Yeah, so it's like hairy old brush. Um, nice. So let's... Um, since today we have newcomers, I'm also going to show how I use the tape. It's very easy. Um, so why I use it? So then we get we get a nice white frame afterwards, and um, and then yeah. and then of course it also helps to stick the paper. Feel free; you can always choose how wide is your frame. Yeah, so you can make it thin, you can make it also wider. Sometimes like I make it wider, it looks maybe a bit more um, interesting. Yeah, the, or you can also control if you want your paper a bit more square or a bit more rectangular. So I'm doing a wider frame today just to experiment. And next step, of course, we start with, with pencil and we do our sketch. So, what? so let's analyze the composition, yeah, because the composition is what we are always starting. We have a line here, yeah, this is the line of the table. We will definitely show also this thickness, yeah, but this white lighter stroke. Yeah, it's a little detail, but important. And then we have kind of the horizontal line of the table. We don't see it, but we can feel it somewhere here, you know, like in the middle of this flower part. And then it's kind of nicely divided, this uh, Bordeaux color and, and the table. Yeah? So basically, let's take a look at our paper. So somewhere here down, we need to do the line of the table. Yeah. What's the easy way to make a straight line? Like now I have to do woo, all the long line. It's good to mark like the start. And here, let's say where I have the tape, I can mark even stronger. And then I mark also to the other side. And then I have the feeling, I know like where I'm going. Yeah? When I have marked it from both sides. And the other way how it's good to check, you know, if the line is straight, you can just measure it. Yeah. So I measure, let's say, okay, how, how much is here? I can measure it in the middle if it fits, if it's not. Yeah. And also the other. So I'm not using ruler, but you can use the pencil to measure and check. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. So don't worry that uh, you need to use some ruler or... Uh, no. Um, we can even make a little bit like maybe a, a double line. So then we don't forget to do our thickness. Yeah? So I'm doing one line and then I'm doing also the... You see my line also is not perfect. And I move it kind of, I do 
more lines I move it back and forth and then when I need I can just uh, clean a bit yeah remove some lines mm -hmm. nice. so we have two lines at the bottom that's going to be uh, the edge of the table and basically all the space that is left we need to divide more or less to the half. Yeah, it's also interesting composition she has chosen. Yeah. So all this space again, I can divide to the half. Yeah. Um, so it's not necessary we do the line, or if it helps, you can do like very light line just at this corner. So just somewhere here a little bit. It will help us maybe create the um, Know the shape of this uh, flower part. Mm -hmm. So we have three lines. Yeah. Take your time. I will try not to rush today. If I'm rushing, please always stop me. Uh, ask to wait. That's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Um. And the next step would be doing the outline for all this white paper part. Yeah? So again, we just try to all think about it just as shapes. So don't think this is the paper, flowers, just the lines and the shape. So this part, so before this white part starts, this one is a bit less than the middle. Yeah, And it's also good. So we don't we don't do this the half, we kind of do till this way. So till here will be this um, this part yeah, where, where we hold. And then the whole big part will be the uh, flowers. And take a look, the paper goes till the top. Yeah? So till the top and it takes all the space. So don't do it small. I, th I think it's a really nice composition um, she chosen. So we will try to just do the same. So less than the half, it will be our part of where we hold the, the flowers. Mm -hmm. So more or less, I had this middle line. I can also remove it later if I want. Mm -hmm. And then I go to do the, somewhere here I have the the point, yeah, of the flowers, paper part. And well, this, then we see the other part, the other paper corner is also touching the edge of the table. And it's also nice, it's a little trick of composition, not to leave this line like solo. We see she breaks, she breaks the line by putting a flower here. She breaks the line by putting a corner here. So it's not so long and boring. Huh? It's, uh... The composition in general is very, very important. Here we use already the work that the artist she did for us. So she did all these choices, where to put the flowers, how to put it, how to crop the picture. Yeah. When we paint our thing, the composition is very, uh, is, is a part that we should always like, put more attention to it. And uh, and skipping this part, then uh, it's, it's kind of, we, we skip it often, but, um, Yeah, so, and I did this inside line. Yeah. So, okay, that's more or less our um, pencil sketch. Mm, let's put also the, maybe the, the flowers a little bit, because um, we're going to be putting the base color first, the flowers on top, but still feel free to sketch a bit the, the little flowers 
Uh, think also about the size. Yeah, so maybe make your flower a bit smaller. I mean, those ones that are lying here at the outside the bouquet. Hmm? Cool. Okay, yeah. Um, take your time to finish, yes. Uh, and meanwhile, I'll tell you maybe a bit of history of the painter. Uh, so Eva Gonzalez, uh, she is a French painter. She, um, she belonged to the group of Impressionists. So we all know the famous Impressionist who did the revolution in painting. And it all started with Edouard Manet. And um, she was uh, both uh, the student of uh, Manet uh, and she was also the model. So he painted her often. Uh, and of course, she was studying, she was um, getting lots of ideas. And uh, so of course her painting also were both in Impressionist style and a bit influenced for Manet. And uh, in those times, it was very hard for women yeah, to, um, uh, to be active, like to be a painter. Uh, uh, so, uh, but she belonged, she kind of reached the level. They uh, accepted her also, her painting and exhibitions. And uh, she so she gave she got a bit of fame. Um, unfortunately, she died quite young. She died uh, around like thirty four, five years old, um, when she was giving birth to uh, her child. So well, yeah, but she left some uh, noticeable paintings, and today we are painting one of it. Um. Okay, uh, I will wait for you to give me a thumbs up when you're done with the, uh, yeah, I see Darren. Is, okay, Diane is also ready. Audrey, ah, everyone is ready. And probably thinking why I'm talking too much. Cool, let's move to the paints. Today we're gonna experiment mixing very interesting colors. So there's uh, like Bordeaux, yeah, like burgundy color uh, that, uh, so here is a bit more reddish and the flowers are a bit more violet. Uh -huh. So uh, we're gonna start with this background color and the table color. Yeah, and then we're gonna move to, to the flowers and then there's some accents. So I would like to uh, advise you to experiment. So to mix this burgundy color, actually we need to mix three primary tones, the, the blue, the red, and yellow. In general, we know the, the theory that mixing these three, we're gonna get brown color. Huh? So it means you're gonna be adding, you need to feel if you want to add more red, you know, to change the proportions. We're gonna do it together, no, no worries. Huh? Um, but let's start with the bit lighter part. As always, it's always good to start with lighter. So let's take either sienna or ochre. Yeah, so sienna, like light brown, yeah? And just uh, color the table. Yeah? Because also it's good to get rid of white spaces, especially because uh, we have white paper there. So, uh, so what I'm putting, I'm putting sienna here. And so this is the sienna color. Um, if it feels a bit too yellowish, feel free to get brown, to get umbra. Yeah, and mix it a bit. And I suggest you put the layer a bit more watery. Huh? So what it means that we can put paints both um, So like using water is important. So you can either have like your brush very watery or you can have your brush dry, the dry brush technique. Yeah? And here I suggest you start more watery. So I'm even like ma making like a little puddle here. Yeah? So I, I took Sienna I, and I slowly add my brown. Yeah, so don't rush 
adding too much brown straight ahead. Mix till the color you like it. Yeah. Um, for example, mine one still is looks a bit like you know too too yellowish. Mm. I'm thinking. I want to make it a bit more pale. Okay, there is a little trick. Um, like mixing brown and blue. But I'm gonna try. Wait, don't don't follow me. It's a little experiment I'm gonna try. And so also what I do, and I wanna I want to add a bit of blue here, but I'm not gonna add here in the middle. I'm gonna try at the corner to see how it works. Yeah. Nice. So and if I like it, I continue. So I added a little bit of blue, and you see my color got a bit more like dump. So it's like not not so active. Huh? So, but if you like your brownish mix, go ahead and don't complicate your life by. Um, yeah. um, yes, you can use like black for this, but I always suggest um, like avoid black as long as you can, because. Um, yeah, it, it it makes painting dirty. And especially since we're doing today the, the impressionists painting, I think they haven't used black at all. I mean, they were famous of, let's say, announcing that shadows are not black. And um, so let's say, you can see also here, I'm putting my, color of course try to use your brush like horizontal yeah, because of the strokes for the table and don't worry that you're getting like the brush strokes yeah. so i'm going around also my flower um in acrylics we, we can paint on top but still it's always looks better when you do it on on the white surface yeah so let's say if I have here all brown, but then I want to put to put reddish. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's um, it's not really like then it won't look so clean. Yeah. So our task now we just put the table. You know, Here, so get also here and the this middle part is double line. I suggest to do the following. So like first, while you have like so much paint on your brush, put it yeah, like here around. And then when you already say you're painting, and then you already there are, there is no paint on your brush. And instead of going and picking more paint, you use, you can just dip your brush a bit to the water. So it's gonna have some leftovers. And then I can put this kind of transparent layer. Yeah? So try to feel how it changes when you have more water on your brush and when you have less uh, water on your brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can um, then you can control. Let's say then instead of using also white paint to lighter the brown, you can use just more water, and it's gonna be also light. Yeah. Nice. Um, since we also have uh, like we're working with brown, we can also go straight and head and put a bit of shadow under um under the paper huh? and this will be crucial like remember forgetting the cast shadows um is a no-go for realistic painting yeah? if you're interested in realistic if you your aim is to do something abstract no problem um and for this of course we need a bit darker brown yeah so 
what you do you either take just uh, less water so you use the same like less water more intense more quality for quantity of paint and that's it and you have them and here i also mixed a bit my brown with blue yeah then it gets a bit more of this and here i'm putting the shadow under my paper yeah and here also try maybe to feel if you're uh, getting this dry brush so here my brush is not that wet yeah. and what it makes it makes that it's painting a bit more with strokes and uh, like this I can get a nice a bit feeling of texture of the table yeah. but don't complicate your head if you know it's not the way oh Audrey yes ask me sorry I didn't notice at once uh, your hand I actually didn't use a black I just I just first used my lighter brown because I got light brown and dark brown too and then I mixed a bit of my dark brown very nice. So you you didn't need to use black. Yes, I don't. That's good. I, I also yeah. Don't. Good job. Like them. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for sharing, Godri. And um, good job of not using black. I also advise it. Um, so, any any time when you need something dark, just use blue and brown. Mix them together. And you're gonna get a dark color, but it's not gonna look, um, yeah, somewhat dirty and um, nice. Okay, so this was the step of the table. Um, Also, for example, you're putting the big surface, like a table, and you're not happy with some strokes. Remember, the secret is not fighting it, but letting it dry. And then once it's dry, it's so much easier to correct it. Then you go just with second layer, let's say of brown, and then it, it looks much more uh, smooth. Yeah? Um, but while it's wet, um, you will always lose uh, against the width. Um, I will also make my sp some space in my pads. How I do it, sometimes take just paper towel. Just with a paper towel, I can like clean up a bit, you know. If you have enough space, you don't need this. But just a little tip or uh, so I'm more comfortable working. Because the next step will also be experiment. Yeah, uh, take your time to finish. If you finished, yeah, show me a uh, thumbs up. So I know. Um, and, and, Um, I'll be just talking about the next step. So there will be two options you can choose. So easier option. So what our aim is, our aim is to get this red 
nice red beautiful color for the background mm -hmm. it's it takes lots of space so it's important to create uh the color that is not dirty you know that it's like uh, beautiful like deep color but still kind of you know clean so you can use just red and add some brown let's say this would be the one option uh, i will experiment with doing with a mix of red blue and and, and yellow yeah i took ochre and no, no, somehow i have doubt about using the the classical um, medium yellow or lemon yellow. Um, I will experiment. Before you're still finishing, I'm going to mix. And if it's really no go, <laughs> we go all together with a classical easy way of just adding red and brown. Mm -hmm. yeah, I will try to mix here just a little pile. See what it. So, red and blue, we know it gives us purple. Yeah. And here we also can control how much purple we want. Yeah. So, if I want it a bit more reddish, like this purple, look, it's perfect for the flower that we have. Yeah. Nice. I can already keep it. But to, to make it this deeper one, okay, let's add a bit of yellow and see what it gives. Ah, I think it actually might work. Yeah, it just makes it a bit more. Uh, could be, could be. Ah, it's, uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. But that's it. So you might have also the story that you have more reds and more blues. And it's normal. Blues especially, usually they come like light and there is always ultramarine and there is, let's say, fatal blue. Like which one should I take? For mixing purple, I suggest you always better take lighter ones. So let's say now I took the ultramarine blue. Yeah, but definitely not because then you get the dark color. Uh, if you mix lighter red and lighter blue, you're going to get lighter mix. Yeah, and it's, uh, so, um, uh, so here was my mix. I had the ultramarine. I had the, uh, the red. This one was um, uh, just just uh, kind of this medium. It, it went a bit too pinkish and red. Yeah, the name is... Um, Crap rot, uh, but it probably also tells you nothing because sometimes paints they have really different names like ultramarine is classical but, or ochre or um, but the reds they have millions of names. And here I was uh, adding a bit of ochre, so I didn't went with um with lemon or uh, just yellow. Uh, I thought, mm -hmm. and actually it looks nice. Yeah, I like I like the color. So before I added yellow, it was a very nice purple that I'll be using also for the flowers. Now I added a bit of this yellow and it looks uh, interesting, kind of very cool, deep color. So I'll take a bigger brush and make a bigger mix. Mm -hmm. Taking, so I'm taking blue. I'm taking red. First mix them, blue and red, and see who nice, like what kind of purple you're getting. Yeah, for purple, it's usually 50 50, 50 of red, 50 blue. And then you can play a bit more blue, the purple will be more darker. Yeah. And this time, here a bit of ochre. Again, always add slowly. Yeah, don't put too much. It's always better to go two, three times back and forth, adding paint rather than 
Oh, very nice color. Somehow I wasn't using it prior a lot. So this is good to choose. Uh, if let's say maybe you have a uh, more paints and you already have kind of uh, a color like this, then just uh, use it straight from the tube. You know, uh, it's there is no rule that you always need to mix. And um, uh, if you bought paints and they are already mixed for you, ready in the tube, awesome. And we'll do our. And again, since it's a like big area to cover, uh, don't worry about strokes. You see, I'm also getting the uh, pencil, uh, sorry, the brush strokes. Um, just when it's going to be like dry, I can go on top again. And then it will remove. It's, it's just the same as painting walls in your apartment. You always need two hands. Yeah, to make it perfect. So yeah, don't forget about this little corner and the other side of the paper. Nice. I'm very happy with this color. And we have um, a big area covered. Right. Let's continue then. Okay. Um, my suggestion would be that we um, we add um, first these light shadows to the to the paper. Yeah. So you see um, here inside. This one, so that's this, the corner, this kind of grayish, here at the bottom of the paper, this grayish, a bit of here. Definitely, you will need a very watery brush. Yeah, so kind of the white paper shall, shall shine through, also here a bit at the bottom. Yeah, and it's gonna be a bit like our base color. And then we, we just gonna do the, the fun part with flowers. Yeah? Um, so again, it's it's a bit of grayish blue, yeah, but still kind of clean color. Uh, so which which colors I would mix? Uh, I would take uh, a blue. So maybe again, you can use the ultramarine. So again, I'm putting like very little bit, bit of bluish, and a bit of brown. Yeah, so. We're using again the second time today this mix. I have here ultramarine. Very nice, yeah. Put put this little part. When you're gonna mix ultramarine and brown, you're gonna get um the brown also not so much. Yeah, just go slowly. But the thing is, you will need to make it very, very watery. So that's why you don't really need to put much paint, just little drops. Yeah, and we're gonna add a bit of white to this. Otherwise, our will, our um, our mix will be too dry, and definitely some here. So, blue, brown, mix it. Yeah, get um, more blue, less brown. Get this kind of grayish, and then you can also remember to wash your brush well. Then go to white, and um, and here we go. Here I have like a nice grayish color but it's light yeah and definitely definitely it has to be uh watery if you're using the same big brush that you just used clean it well yeah um tap it like strong into the water then also use your paper towel yeah to kind of because the paint gets stuck yeah where the metallic parts are and then if you move from dark to light paints, then it might um, just um, 
you know, kind of ruin a bit. Yeah. And so with this grayish, I go inside this corner. Yeah. And you see, like it's watery. Yeah. So uh, I'm using also the whiteness of the paper. And how long? It doesn't matter. You see, maybe it can be a bit of here. So blue, a bit of brown, and then adding white. And then definitely making it all like a big puddle. Yeah. And inside of the flower, like if you manage to make it this light and transparent, yeah, it's like, like you can go like inside, no problem. The the flowers will will cover it. You know? Where else I have? I have here at the bottom. So the light usually comes from top, and it wow. means the under part is gonna be darker. If you can, please leave a little thickness for the paper as well. Yeah, so I'm going to show it now. Like here, you see, I left a little white part. Yeah, this side later will be even darker. Um, thicknesses, it's something that's very important. So even paper, we should paint with uh, thickness, even if it's thin. And here I can also exaggerate a bit and make it a bit more, but thickness is always important. And definitely a bit some shadow here. So this long part, yeah, we can't leave it just white. Once I put here this grayish, it starts looking, uh, yeah, that's a bit more shapey. Mm -hmm. And And yeah, so, we remember just the, the light and shadow theory. If the object is has shape, the light is shining now from top. So the shadow here at the bottom. Yeah. And again, if you want realistic, this is something we should uh, should follow. Nice. I'm I'm leaving uh, paper white for now. If later um, I'm going to feel it's a bit too white, I can add maybe um, watery uh, pink. It also could be a good idea. Yeah. But uh, we definitely do it later. Um, yeah, so when it's everything is ready, then you can kind of analyze. Mm, do I want it um, darker, lighter? Mm -hmm. So I hope you managed to do the this grayish. Yeah. yeah. Also, if but like you did it too dark, don't worry. You can correct it. How you can correct it? First, you remember the golden rule. You wait. You wait till it's dry. And once it's dry, you can always go and um, with watery, clean white. You go on top and it's going to lighter your... Um... Here, where the handle is, I also go and try to create some, uh, not like the feeling that uh, the paper paper is crumpled. Uh, and basically, that's our um, base part. Let's check what time is it. Um, yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to do the fun part with... Uh,
Okay, so you let me know when you're ready to move to flowers. Yeah, so we move all together. Uh -huh, I see Audrey is re uh, ready. Nice one. Diana, how are you doing? Is it hard? Or, um... Can we move to the flowers, Diana? Yeah, okay, very nice. Thanks for letting me know. What about you, Darren? Also, ah, perfect. Lana, I hope you're also ready with grayish. Okay, now it's gonna be fun part. So first will be the, the dark purple ones. Yeah? And you see there are also nice white strokes there. They also give nice touches. But first we put just this uh, base dark purple color. Uh, yeah, so it was blue and red, unless you already have, maybe uh, in your paints you already have this mix. So I'm just sitting this color here. Where are the flowers? And in this case, like if you're getting the brush strokes, it's better. Yeah, it's gonna look more like textury. Yeah, so don't even try getting just a perfect uh, colored spot. Um, One flower here, so two flowers on the table, and then gonna be three flowers in the... here. Okay, where to, to sit them? They're more like a bit outside. Little little tip, you can make these darker flowers a bit bigger, then it will be less work to do the the bluish ones, yeah. So we can kind of trick a bit the okay. And again, for example, we control amount of water on the brush. Here, I suggest. There is not so much water, like since acrylics can work both as watercolors, they can be thin, transparent, watery, but they can also be a bit like oil, so you can leave even the, you know, like a little pile of paint. Yeah, so this one is nice, you, um, you get like bigger strokes for the flowers. Yeah, and we let it dry. We're going to do the bluish part now, and then we're going to come back and do the, the light pinky strokes. And yeah? it's also going to give a nice touch up. Um, actually, we just almost, yeah, no, I'm thinking, no, with the other color, it's good to give the, the this part for the, that's what we're going to do when we move to the, Thin brush. Um, yes, these are flowers. And um, again, I'm just gonna like speak to, to well, how we're gonna work to make all those lots of small bluish flowers. Yeah? I suggest we mix parallel, darker, and lighter blue. Yeah. And um, then you can play both 
parallel. Yeah. So you don't really need to draw each of these flowers separately. Yeah. First, like we have a short painting session. It's um, we're gonna be just like making a feeling. There are lots of bluish flowers, but it's important. You have the light parts, and then you have dark bluish in between. Yeah. So mixing light blue and dark blue in parallel. Yeah. So you might even get just two brushes for this: one for light, one for dark. Um, the light blue definitely with lots of white. So much bigger pile of white than blue. So can we come here a bit? So it's same putting. So even light blue from the tube, it's going to be still too dark. I'm taking the again cleaning well your brush. Don't forget we're moving again to the light one, and we're mixing. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm like preparing a bigger pile straight away because we have lots of flowers. So a very light, pale blue. Yeah, um, the bigger difference you will create between this light blue and the dark blue, the better it's going to look like the contrast. Yeah? So this will be like one mix. And the dark blue, I suggest again, you can take either ultramarine or um, also darker one that is like cobalt of, or fatalo. But definitely again, mix it a bit with, um, with brown. So to calm it down, yeah? you don't want it um, to be like too bright. Otherwise the shadowy part won't work. Yeah? Here I can mix it. Yeah, it's gonna be like really dark. Um, so you can also maybe like if you want, I think tiny bit. Now oh, that's already. Yeah. So I've added a really tiny bit of white to this my darker mix. Um, but be careful because the shadowy part and actually adding white. The shadowy part is is um is very um, yeah, you need to be very careful, otherwise the shadow part doesn't work. Cool. This is what I have. I have light blue and I have dark blue. And then just try to play. Yeah. Don't feel like mm, like scared. Oh my. My flowers, they look, they don't look. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And then you can just start placing like your brushes. So even like, you know, touch ups, so a bit of uh, different direction. So I'm not even like moving my brush, but I'm touching, just putting the and also also a little bit outside the paper that, that should look good. Yeah? And play a bit first with the light one, then go back to the to the dark blue, put some some in, in between. Yeah. Of course you can also play a bit, like form a bit the shape of flower if you want, just like putting those strokes a bit like you know, in circular way. So you put one, two, three, like around. Yeah, so you see, it's also crucial to have a clean brush here. So my blue is clean. Yeah, if, because uh, making it dark is always easy. Okay. Lots of nice. And also going on top of the red flowers. Mm -hmm. 
so then it feels uh, they're all integrated so don't leave your um, red flowers just a separate spot Uh, with putting the darker one, of course, be a bit more cautious, let's say. Don't overdo it. Um, so, for example, now I put it at the dark spot, but I can also use a bit more, like, to... to um, like, I put the spot, and if I feel it's too strong, I just go to the water, I clean my brush, and then um, uh, I go with a clean, watery brush just to make it like softer. Yeah? And there are also kind of pinkish strokes on top of the bluish flowers. Yeah, that's, um, we're going to do it together with the strokes of And here we have just two blues. Yeah, so of course, let's say more elaborated painting would be that you have like three or even four different blues in there. Yeah. You can make this, then maybe you can also mix in between those, uh, your light blue and your dark blue. Then you can get a third tone play a bit with it also the middle layer but still there are more definitely more light blue strokes Um, and of course um, the little touch-ups that's what will bring all our painting together um, so definitely uh, let's say green leaves yeah, let's let's observe this. This painting has green leaves. A bit also like looking out of the paper, the paper breaking the um, the paper line. Um, then of course there's a bit some yellow spot inside of the dark purple flowers. Uh, also here a bit yellowish spot on the flower that is lying at the bottom. Yeah. Definitely I finished mine. Okay, yeah. Hmm? How, how's your painting going, Godri? Is it um I actually bit used a bit of my own techniques? Wow, such a cool painting, guys. Let's take a look at uh Audrey's. The paper looks awesome. Yeah, flowers as well. Nice job, Audrey. Oh, you're a cool painter. Nice. Yeah, one. I actually go a lot, a lot painting. I if I count these lessons, then I go five or four times a week to my thing. Yeah, I paint almost five. I have painting lessons almost five and four times a week because I sometimes can't get to my school. Well, it's impressive, Audrey. You paint so much. Wow, you're a true painter. I paint really much. <laughs> the 
it's very good. I'm happy. Thanks for sharing. It's it's very inspiring for those of us who sometimes <laughs> don't find much time to paint. Cool. Very impressive. Um, I've added a bit of yellowish uh, strokes. So definitely. Um, now I already got a bit chaotic. So we also, like at this moment, feel, um, you know, uh, how you want to progress, like putting some leaves or, um, yeah, the, the pinkish touch-ups. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put also, the green is also definitely good. Also, maybe not too much. Yeah, and um, I also mix my green with brown because then I also want to get it a bit more, uh, say, pale. Yeah? So it's not so shiny because here green is not the, like the, the important part. And the leaves do them like also bravely. Yeah, just put your... Uh, and like go on top, yeah. So just the shape. Some green. Um, yeah, and the final will be then, of course, the job of the thin brush. Uh, it's good to have one when you need to do thin things. Like it's almost impossible to do it with the. Um, uh, like the other trick is your brush needs to be also wet to do a thin line. Mm. Yeah, so. And also don't forget to do the um, cast shadow. So if you did this, uh, the line, this for um, for the flower that is lying uh, on the table, yeah, and it has this. Yeah, so the time of touch-ups, yeah, you can use uh, a bit of white, you can use a bit of also light pink. Mm -hmm. Light pink probably is better or just mix both of them. So let's see here, I'm going to show it's also closer. Mm -hmm. So just doing these little pinky touch-ups, you know, for um, and definitely the cast shadow. Yeah, so you can also observe. Let's say this is this uh, this part is handle for for this falling tree uh, flower, and like how it looks now. And now I'm gonna put just a thin line of the cast shadow. Wait, I'm gonna. To put it on the table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, a bit darker in it. And again, it doesn't have to be a long like uh, the line that goes all the way. You can also break it somewhere. But once you have it, yeah, then it's um Looks looks nice. Here I'm gonna connect it a bit. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, one can work here yeah, a lot. So if you have time, this painting can be like be elaborated very nicely. Okay, what else? Ah, and I want the pinky pinky touch ups also inside the flowers. Maybe also it helps to like yeah, it's it's actually works. I suggest you do it also there. A little, but again, very light. Clean well your brush, they clean white, more white than uh, red, red a little tiny bit. So you create, and you do some, some touches. And um, yeah, that's pretty much like is the rest is really um, like taking your time to improve. Yeah. So, and what I mean, like details, yeah, you can do the, maybe you want to do more flower details somewhere. Yeah. And also doesn't have to be too much. Like uh, sometimes it's like you put a few details and somewhere and it already helps to to make it look more realistically and uh, no. It can uh, also mean maybe not definitely going to the, just to the lighter. Let's say now I'm coming back to a bit darker uh, purple and making also some accents in the dark flowers. Mm -hmm. Here also outside, I did a little like thin strokes. And you can notice here, it's also a bit like the shape of the flowers. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take off the tape so it looks pretty, but then still can continue improving the painting. And at the end, I think I've decided not to do anything with white parts of paper. I think they look cool, like shiny white. Maybe it's, oh, maybe let's try, I'll try it. Maybe so it's not everywhere the same shiny white, maybe very, very pale pink can work in some areas, you know? Because it's just the idea we don't make it too similar everywhere. Yeah, so you can play and playing like with the watery um, pink in some areas, but it's not necessary. I'd say don't risk it. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
uh, feel free to share in the chat uh, how it looks so I can give some comments. Mm. Yeah, so also just for the info for the newcomers, um, we have a WhatsApp chat that you can quickly send your painting and then I can see it and then I can comment yeah, and maybe give some tips where to improve. Yeah, so for the next time, you can also join it if you're interested. Here I'm going also in bits like second layer where the uh, gray lines for the paper are. Yeah, so then again, it's not only two colors, white and gray, but um, a bit more than. Oh, I like it. So I'm very curious how your ones turned out. Yeah, you can ask Audrey. Mm -hmm. Tell us. I just wanna be told that I that I actually have gold and silver paint too. But it's not very golden and silver. So I mix them together and it made this bright. Ah good job. Interesting exploring the yeah, the metallic paints. Wow. And they're shiny. Exactly. Nice. I also like to use uh, gold and metallic ones, maybe in some other lessons we we also gonna use them. Cool. Ah. Audrey likes to experiment. That's nice. Nice one. Um, I'm going to show you what I have planned for the, the next week. Yeah, and then, um, then I'll stop the recording so then we can share more easily our results. So for the next week, uh, Audrey, take a look. The next week, we're going to experiment with uh, Vincent van Gogh. Yeah, so here you see the, the Vincent van Gogh, his name. And uh, the, the painting is um, the two, uh, I forgot any of these two trees, the long ones. Uh, he painted them a lot. And we're gonna explore how we can recognize Van Gogh because his paintings, they are recognized 
exactly about those long strokes. Yeah, here they go horizontal. Here they go. Yes, like... I know paintings like that. Actually, um, I think I know um, paint squares, and but I think it's a bit funny that my one brother's name is Leonardo, oh. like Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks for sharing, Audrey. That's cool. Mm. Um. But he's Leonardo Ray. I see, very nice. Yeah, not Ray, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so this I is the... Um... I know a lot of Russian teachers. I see you're very experienced in art. Yeah. So yes. we're going to continue um, exploring famous artists. So, yeah, as I said, Van Gogh is coming next week. And uh, yeah, now let's take our time to explore our results and share together.